Sam is our resident mad scientist around here. The guy comes up with the most wild, outside the box builds you could ever think of, and he's constantly pushing the envelope. Introducing the Diesel Sellers exclusive Diesel Motorcycle. Electric mini drag bike. You've piqued my interest. Yeah, I'll keep it short and sweet. So are you ready to see the next Sparks Motor marketing masterpiece? Sam, to be honest with you, it doesn't matter whether I'm ready or not, because you're going to just like that. You're going to show me. There you go, right there. What is it? I would like to introduce you to the Kraken. What the hell is the Kraken? Well, apart from it being like the mythological sea beast, mm -hmm. this is a Mono wheel. Have you ever seen the ones where the wheel spins around the outside of the rider, right? Those are always so unstable. I love the way they look, love the way the wheel, like how organic it looks, mm -hmm. but I wanted to make it a little bit more stable, so mm -hmm. I figured making two outriggers, kind of like uh, arms or little pontoons on a boat or a plane to help stabilize it. Back up, back up, back up, back up, back up. How far? We still backing? You, you're getting into the details mm -hmm. before you even sold me on what the hell this is for. This right here is for social media exposure. So if you see right here, we've got a mad scientist formula. This has worked great so far. Crazy idea uh -huh. times the cost divided by the coolness factor gives you website traffic squared. You get a lot of views from the crazy stuff that we have. There's no in. numbers in there. Those are all words. Exactly. Formula is it's something you follow. You have to plug in your numbers as you go. Do you have a cost? Yeah, it's a very, very tiny number. I actually have it hidden under here. See? What? <laughs> very small. Oh, very, very small number. That's the smallest 10,000. Why I've did you stash the number behind there and make it so small? <laughs> uh, keep from sticker shock. I see $10,000. Mm -hmm. All right, Sam. You did it again. You convinced me into another terrible, terrible, terribly looking idea, but with huge potential. So, do you see any red flags? The entire project. The entire project? <laughs> <laughs> this entire thing looks like a red flag to me, but I know you're gonna do it anyways, so. Instead of just fastening these right to the metal, what if we added some cool rib-like structures coming out on the side to make it look like the rib cage? And that'll actually more, be more comfortable to sit on. It'll come out the side a little bit more. <laughs> well, yeah, because that should work real well. And if we uh, make those ribs out of some thicker material, that should help with the center of gravity staying yeah. below. Yeah. So a couple the seasons back down. when you guys were doing the somersault truck, you wanted the whole thing to rotate. Here, you want the tube to rotate, but you do not want this thing spinning. So if you can add some weight with some beefy ribs, you know, it's going to help you out. Let's make some measurements. Make sure this is comfortable. Morgan, take your shirt off. Take your Can shirt you off. take my shirt take off? Take your shirt off right now. Man, I mean, if we're talking about bioesthetically pleasing, wait till you see yeah, that. Yeah, let's see. <laughs> Still got me? We can fit two of these down there. So yeah. your first six inches, mark it off for the lumbar supports. All right. Is it really any different with my shirt off? <laughs> There's no way we could ever see your vertebrae with your shirt on. Oh, okay. Now we're in the thoracic. You've got five vertebrae in like the rib cage area here. That's perfect. And after that, I think realistically for comfort, he's gonna want to be leaned a little bit more forward. So let's go ahead and mark the next three inches as the first one. So here's the thing, like if your steering mechanism actually works, and I'm a little, a little cautious about it, he's gonna have to be leaning this thing. So imagine as this thing pitches, if you don't have supports out on the side with this rib structure we're building, yeah. it's gonna be super uncomfortable just to have that one right in the middle of your back. This lets them sort of lean into those curves. If you're gonna yeah. add weight though, just make sure the ribs you put on them, man, the beefier the better. If you're gonna oh, yeah. add weight, that's the place to put it, right down here. All right. Not where I saw my day going today. Not but... me neither. Yeah. Right. Can here I put are. my shirt back on? <laughs> no, not yet. <laughs> yeah! All right. Cracking. Let's ready yeah. to start coming together. Yeah, let's go ahead and try to get this piece up on the engine hoist and level it out, then we can attach the arms. So, a little heavier now with all yeah, this beef on it. These are gonna be the pivot points so that the suspension can articulate back and forth and allow the Kraken to turn. These are a lot bigger than I originally envisioned. We go <laughs> back and forth. There. Wow. Dude, this thing looks rad. So now, put the front hubs on. There we go. What's next, man? Do you want to? Take a stab at giving me a hand with making those rings, because you've had a, a lot better luck with running that tube bender than I have. 
Yeah, we can give so. it a shot. The main drive wheel for Sam's Kraken, it's got to be perfectly round. Why? Because it's going to be doing, like Sam says, 30, 40 miles an hour. If there's any imperfections, and if that wheel's out of round, it could be catastrophic. Oh, yeah, we're going to have to go a lot more. <laughs> That's only because I'm only, only 150 pounds of That's not a lot of torque. The reason why rolling this tube into a perfect circle is so hard is because our tube roller isn't necessarily meant for putting things in a perfect circle. I'll just make sure it keeps feeding straight. There's pieces on the end that the machine basically has to use to clamp and to bite onto the tube. Oh, yeah, it's getting tighter. Well, it can't roll those. So what it does is just keeps those flat. Woo, she's oh, man, yielding you now. Can see this one really yielding. <laughs> All right. All right, you got a port of power time, port of band, band, don't you? Yeah, I'm gonna go grab that. So the guys have to figure out how to roll just enough extra, and then they have to cut off those flat sections. Boom! All right. And then close the circle of the wheel. Oh yeah, no problem. And hope that that measurement's right. All right, more Gs. Moment of truth. See how straight that wheel is. You ready for this? Sweet! Yeah. Sweet! Man. What are you thinking? I'm, I think you're I don't thinking know, what man. I'm, I'm thinking. I'm really concerned that this part being out around, causing a hop, once we get that on both wheels, they could either synchronize and bounce, or they could get out of sync and cause it to go crazy. I'm just... I mean, I'm sort of terrified to even ask this question, but what is your planned top speed of this thing? About 45, 50. Ooh! <laughs> it's potential, right, you know. Right, so right. you don't want a wheel hop at 45, 50 miles nah. an hour. Unfortunately, I think I'm gonna have to dip into the budget and have these outsourced, because this is just such a critical component to the overall ride and feel of the vehicle. One millimeter out, and you'll feel it. Honestly, it kind of sucks. Because we're on our way to going over that $10,000 budget, which is not good because we don't even know if this thing's gonna work. Let's go see what, uh, what we can dig up. 